Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk real quick about how you can play a song called Amazing Grace. And it's going to start on a G major chord. We're going to take the first finger and put it on the A string on the second fret. Second finger is going to go to the low E on the third fret. And the third finger is going to go to the high E on, on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, then that makes a G major chord. And we're actually going to do a couple G majors at the beginning. And then we're going to go to a C major chord. And you play a C major chord with the first finger on the B string on the first fret. Second finger is going to go to the D on the second fret. Third finger is going to go to the A on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes a C major chord over sound really happy. And then we're going to go from C major back to a G major chord. And then we're going to do another G major chord. And another G major chord. But then we go to a D major chord. And the way you play a D major, first finger is going to go to the G on the second fret. Second finger is going to go to the high or the skinny on the second fret. And the third finger is going to go right between them on the B string on the third fret. And with a D chord, you want to try and play just D, G, B, and E, so just the top four strings to get your clearest sound out of the D major. And after D major, we're going to go back to a G major chord, and then another G major chord, but then we go to a C major chord, and then we go back to a G major chord, and then we're going to go to an E minor chord. And the way you play an E minor, first finger is going to actually kind of go to the A on the second fret, which is the same place it is for G. Second finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds really sad, and that's called E minor. And then after the E minor chord, we're going to go back to a D major chord, and then we go back to a G major chord, and then we do another G major chord. So from the beginning, we got G major, another G major, and then C major, and back to G major, and another G major, and another G major, and then D major. Back to G major, another G major, and then a C major, and then a G major, and then E minor, D major, G major, another G major. So that'll be one way to kind of play through the song, just doing downstrokes on on each of the chords. But to make that a little bit more interesting, what we we could add in a strum pattern. One of my favorite strum patterns for Amazing Grace. Because it's a 3-4 strum pattern, or a 3-4 uh, time, which means you tap your foot three times for each of the chords we were just playing. So like, one, two, three, one, two, three. So to kind of fill in that time, one of my favorite 3-4 strum patterns is a down, down, up, down, up. So on the G chord, we could just try that a bunch. We could go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. that through the, the verse progression which is really kind of the chorus too um, we'd have G with a down down up down up G down down up down up C down down up down up G down down up down up G down down up down up G down down up down up D down down up down up G down down up down G down down up down G down down up play through that is doing what I call the bass down up down up and what you do with that is instead of doing the first down over all the strings you play the bass note for the chord so on the G chord the lowest note with the name G in that chord is on the low E string so you could just try play, taking that chord and playing the low E string and then doing the down up down up after that so you got bass on the low E down up down up bass on the low E down up down up G with the low E bass down up down up you go to the C chord, then we're doing an A string for the bass because that's the lowest note that has the name C. So you'd be trying to aim for the A string and then doing your down, up, down, up, A string bass, down, up, down, A string bass, down, up, down, up, A string bass, down, up, down for all your C chords. For your D chords, you'd be doing an open D string for your bass. So we have bass on the D string, down, up, down, up, open D for the bass, down, up, down, up, open D for the bass. Down, up, down, open D for the bass. Down, up, down, up. And then for your E minor chord, then you'd have the low E string for the bass with a thick E, because that's the lowest note that, with the name E. And so we have low E bass. Down, up, down, up, low E bass. Down, up, down, low E bass. Down, up, down, low E bass. Down, up, down, E minor. So we try 
slide that through our, our chord progression, then we'd have the G major with a low E bass, down, up, down, another G with a low E bass, down, up, down, up, C with the A bass, down, up, down, G with a low E bass, down, up, down, G with a low E bass, down, up, down, G with a low E bass, down, up, down, D with the D bass, down, up, down, D with the D bass, down, up, down, G with a low E bass, down, up, down, G with a low E bass, down, up, Something else we can do to make this slightly more interesting is add in what are called dominant seven chords. And what dominant seven chords do is their purpose in life is to point to other chords. So for instance, um, the, the dominant seven chord that points to a C chord is something called G7. And the way you play a G7 chord is we take the first finger and go to the high E on the first fret. Second finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret. And third finger is going to go to the low E on the third fret. And that makes a G7 chord kind of helps point to the C chord. So from the very beginning, sometimes playing a G7 chord right before you play the C chord can give it more pull or more weight. So from the beginning, you have G, G7, C, it's kind of a pointing device. Um, another seven chord that we could add to this progression is something called D7, and D7 or D dominant seven helps point to G, so that's his purpose in life. Is we're gonna, the way you play D7 is we're going to take the first finger and put him on the B on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the G on the second fret, and the third finger is going to go to the high E on the second fret, and if you strum just the top four strings like we did with D major, that sounds kind of nasty, it's kind of supposed to sound nasty, but that's called D7. And his main purpose in life is to point to G major. So we could kind of use the D7 before some of the G majors to, to, to kind of point to, to the G. So using G7 and D7 through the progression, you'd have G major, G7, C, G, and another G. to the G major, another G major, or we, we could do G7, <laughs> and then we go to C major, and then we're back to G major, and then E minor, but then we can play D7, D7, and then go back to G major, another G major. Now our bass notes for the G7 are the same as for the G chord, so we'd be still be doing a low E bass, down, up, down, up, low E bass on the G7, down, up, down, for that chord, and for the D7, we'd still be doing the D string for the bass, if we're using the bass down, up, down, up. So if we tried that with the bass down, up, down, up, using the dominant 7s, so then we have the G with the low E bass, down, up, down, G7 with the low E bass, down, up, down, C with the A bass, down, up, down, G with the low E bass, down, up, down, another G with the low E bass, down, up, down, another way you can kind of play through the tune. Um, now everything that we're doing so far is dealing with what's called harmony in music, which means the chords back up the melody, which is what you would be singing. But a lot of times you can get the guitar to kind of sing for you by playing the melody on the guitar. And the way this would work is you could kind of get it to sing the amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that melody. So if we started on the, that melody would start on the open D string, and then you play open G string, and you play open B, and then open G, and then open B, but then you go second fret on the G string, and then open G, and then second fret on the D string, and then open D. So from the beginning, one more time, we got open D, open G, open B, open G, open B, and then second fret on the G string, open G, and then second fret on the D, and then open D. 
we almost start over again after that. We'd have open D, and then open G, open B, open G, open B. And then we'd play second fret on the G string, but then we'd go to third fret on the B string. So from the beginning, we got D, G, B, G, B, A, G, E, D, or actually the notes we're playing, D, G, B, G, B, A, D. So we could kind of get the guitar to kind of play those notes. So, so one more time, we got open D, open G, open B, open G, open B. And then second fret on the G, open G, and then second fret on the D, and then open D, open D, open G, open B, open G, open B, second fret on the G, and then third fret on the B. And then the next part, we go open B, and then third fret on the B, and then third fret on the B, open B, open G. And then open D, second fret on the D, and then open G, second fret on the D, open D. And then we have open D, open G, open B, open G, open B, second fret on the G, open G. So that second phrase, just to go over that one more time, we'd have, let's see, right after the third fret on the B, or, or yeah, third fret on the, on the B, then we kind of play that, that note again. Third fret on the B, open B, open G, open D, second fret on the D, open G, second fret on the D, open D, open D, open G, open B, open G, open B, and then second fret on the G, and then open G. So all together, like, and, and actually, if you're interested in what notes you're playing, actually, I'll, I'll call it the notes this time of what you're actually playing. So you're going D, G, B, G, B, A, G, E, D, D, G, B, G, B, A, D, B, D, D, B, G. Would be how you could play the melody which is the song or the, or the tune and kind of get your guitar kind of singing through that so So that would be a, another way to kind of play through Amazing Grace, kind of doing the melody. Something else that I like trying with this song, and this may be a little weird, especially if you're used to doing the pick, but something else that I like doing with the chords, going back to the harmony, is, is doing an arpeggio with the right hand. Now, now, since we just talked about bass notes, this may make a little bit of sense, because basically if you're doing finger style, your thumb is the bass player, and then your index, middle, and ring finger a lot of times will get assigned to index finger goes to the G string in the right hand, middle finger is going to go to the B string, and then the third finger is going to go to the E string, um, on the high E string. So you kind of have this idea of like bass and then index middle ring. So you could kind of like take the G chord, just for example, and kind of try like doing a thumb stroke and then an index middle ring. And this is weird with, with, with finger style. You might want to try that in the air. I, I like doing zombie hand stuff sometimes where I'm just kind of like trying to do my, my arpeggio stuff in the air, or my right hand fingers in the air. Because you want to try and get all your knuckle joints moving in one direction rather than plucking like this. Well, unless you want that kind of sound. But if you, if you use all your joints in the same direction, then it, it's kind of a unified force and it actually ends up being easier um, to play that way and you can stay more relaxed that way. So if you line up your thumb on the low E string for the G chord, index finger on the G, middle finger on the B string, and then ring finger on the high E string, then we could kind of go straight through those fingers, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring. Now, if you're a classical guitar player, then, then classical guitar players use abbreviations for, from, from Spanish guitar players in the 1700s. So the thumb is pulgar, index is indeso, 
middle is medio, ring fingers angular. So a lot of times classical guitar players may describe this arpeggio as a P-I-M-A arpeggio. So, but we're doing low E for the thumb, and then index for the G, and then middle for the B string, and then high E for the ring finger. And then a lot of times if we come back to middle finger after that, and then back to the index on the G, then that gives us a 3-4 arpeggio with the right hand. So we've gone thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. And you can even try that in the air. Thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. Like, just to try that. Thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. So for a classical guitar player, you'd be thinking P-I-M-A-M-I, P-I-M-A-M-I. But if we did that through the chord progression, and changed our thumb notes to our bass notes for the chord. So we have our G chord with the low E bass. I am A M I and G7 with the low E bass. I am A M I and then the C with the A bass. A M I and then back to G with the low E bass. I am A M I and another G with the low E bass. I am A M I and another G with the low E bass. I am A M I and then we have the D with the D bass. I am A seven with P, I, M, A, M, I, D bass. And then we got the G chord with the low E bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then G seven with the low E bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then the C chord with the A bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then back to G with the low E bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then E minor with the low E bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then D seven with the D bass, I, M, A, M, I, and then G with the low E bass, I, M, A, So all together with our dominant seven chord progression and our right hand arpeggio, thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, um, it would kind of sound like this. So we'd have the G, G7, C, G, 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 D, D7, G, G7. So anyway, that's the basics of how you could kind of work your way through Amazing Grace. So good luck.